maybe I have the flu. Who knows? All I know is I don't feel good and I must commit to the bit for film is lit. So, so that is why I sound sickly. <laughs> This is what the Avengers think they look like. Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai is a movie. A three and a half hour long black and white Japanese film made in the 50s. But we forgive Kurosawa for this long run time because Seven Samurai delivers on so many different fronts. Influenced by America's iconic John Ford. In this video, we'll view Kurosawa's characters and storyline beside the searchers as a western. Kurosawa's Seven Samurai subverts classic western tropes as seen in The Searchers through its multiple protagonists and their conquests driven by benevolence and honor, according to Robert Pippin's definition of a classic western. The Searchers' John Wayne lays the blueprint for the lone cowboy figure and defines the classic cowboy archetype as a brooding, gunslinging man who works alone. Seven Samurai subverts this through humanist themes of community identity and justice. Instead of a revenge plot driven by racism, and fear of race mixing. The samurai are driven by their code of honor and selflessness to defend a group of villagers from some bandits. Before I explain how Seven Samurai subverts classic westerns, let's classify what is a western, according to Robert Pippin's definition of a classic western. In this quote from Pippin's What is a Western? Politics and Self-Knowledge in John Ford's The Searchers, he puts the basic aspects of the western into words through the lens of mythic accounts. The Greeks have the Iliad, the Jews, the Hebrew Bible, the Americans have John Ford. Yay. He essentially says, America's relatively new status as a nation has allowed American culture and values to come from romanticized and glorified stories of how our country came to be. American Westerns act as a sort of propaganda, and by extension, John Ford's Westerns embody American culture. Instead of myths and legends, we have romanticized Confederate soldiers and genocide. On that note, Pippin lists three basic elements of a John Ford Western as conquest of Native Americans, conquest over the untamed and uncontrolled, and law and political order. When we think of the protagonist of American Westerns, what comes to mind is typically a lone, masculine figure. Maybe his closest friends are horses and pistols. This leads into the first major subversion. It's true, there are seven samurai I counted. The protagonists in Seven Samurai subvert tropes of the westerns through their existence in numbers. When the village is first attacked, Kambe, the leader samurai, is recruited, but instead of working alone, he helps recruit more samurai to work with him. He takes Kachusiro under his wing as an apprentice and shapes his head to pass as a monk so a child can be safe from a bandit. These early acts of selflessness not only subvert lone cowboy tropes, but also subvert behavior of samurai in feudal Japan, as they would serve families from higher castes while farmers were on the bottom of the status pyramid. Kambe's attitudes towards banding with others to achieve a greater goal contrast Ethan's attitudes in The Searchers. Ethan is a mythic figure placed above everybody in the family hierarchy. He drags hysterical women away from windows, he seeks vengeance, and he's the man of the house. At the funeral scene, Ethan storms off dismissively. In the final shot of the film, he stands outside the house framed by the door while his family fades into the shadows. Even in times of distress and high emotion, he feels the need to establish his separation from the group. Groups and westerns are symbolic of the changing attitudes of society, which leads me into my next point, motivations and society. Context is a major aspect of comparing the two films. Although both films were made within five years of each other, cultural and societal differences add nuances to the motivations of the protagonists. The Searchers is set in Texas, post-Civil War. Ethan, once a soldier in the Confederacy, reflects attitudes toward outside society and race mixing during this time. When his family is murdered and kidnapped by Scar, he sets off on a revenge quest, searching for his niece Debbie throughout the film. He's driven by the fear of her corruption and assimilation into Scar's tribe. The women are symbols of purity and whiteness. One of the greatest offenses could be corrupting your woman. The objectification of women paired with the villainizing of Native Americans roots Ethan's motivations to get revenge on Scar, eventually ending with Ethan killing indigenous peoples on horseback. His version of honor comes in the form of revenge, to preserve American purity. Samurai in feudal Japan serve by an honor code known as the Bushido Code. This code dictates the behaviors of samurai and sets the standards for their service. The code stresses eight ideas or virtues, which the samurai are supposed to follow until the day they die. Benevolence, courage, respect, sincerity, righteousness, honor, self-control, and loyalty. By following them, a samurai could fulfill his duties to his lords and Japanese society as a whole. This also fell into a divided caste system. Samurai were associated with serving the wealthy or high-status families, while villagers and farmers and peasants had no business with them. If samurai served lower caste, they went against societal norms. Differences feed perception, which can lead to assumptions on both groups. This is seen when Manzo voices his distrust of keeping samurai in the village. In a review, Roger Ebert says, 
The purpose was to make a samurai movie that was anchored in Japanese culture and yet argued for flexible humanism in place of rigid traditions. One of the central truths of Seven Samurai is that the samurai and the villagers who hire them are of different castes and must never mix. Rather than conquest of landscape or indigenous peoples, we see the samurai challenging the caste system as if it were a frontier. They tread new territory when it comes to class mixing. As Shino hysterically cries into the dirt and her father shames her in front of the village, a turning point reveals itself when Samurai Kakuchio comes to Katsushiro and Shino's defense, essentially posing the question, why can't they be together? Thinking back to the Bushido Code, it takes courage, respect, honor, self-control, and loyalty to defy social norms. True honor and respect is earned through selflessness. BBC's M. Bilson writes, Seven Samurai's appeal lies in emotions and mythologies, not only specific to feudal Japan, but which strike a universal chord. So, Seven Samurai cuts through classic Western tropes with spears and swords, and its subversion allows us to study important differences in the two films and two cultures. It makes us reflect on what society truly deems admirable and heroic. It makes us question, how can we challenge the frontiers in our own lives? 